So you're looking for the best laptop for your on-the-go video editing needs. And in this video, I've picked my top five favorites for performance, build quality, usability, and on-the-go friendliness. Now the parameters for these laptops, are they thin and light? Do they have good battery life? Are they on-the-go friendly regarding thin and light and usability? And do they have great performance, of course? Now kicking things off, we're gonna go from the budget-friendly all the way up to more of the high-end laptop. And these will increase in performance as we work our way through as well. I wanna thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video and bringing us some great deals this holiday season. More info coming up on that in just a few minutes. Now stay tuned to the end of the video because we're going to look at benchmark results for how each of these laptops stand up to one another. First and foremost, we're going to start at the budget-friendly option, which is the Acer Swift X, newest to Acer's lineup. This has the RTX 3050 Ti, the Ryzen 7 5800U mobile processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. Now this laptop is a great budget-friendly option. It is a little bit thicker than, say, something like the Asus ROG X13, but it is still thin and light. As you can see, the results coming up on the screen here. One complaint I have about this laptop is it feels a little on the light side as far as materials are concerned. It doesn't feel as sturdy as some of these other laptops I have here in front of me. But for the price at just around $1,000, and if you're curious about the exact price and availability, you can head down in the description below and click one of the links of any of these laptops. Now, if you do make a purchase of those links, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Some of the highlight features of this laptop though, besides me not loving the build quality, is the cool and quiet nature of this laptop. It runs very cool, which makes it very comfortable when it's on your lap, when you're on the go, whether you're in a car, on a train, in a plane, whatever it might be. It's a comfortable laptop to use and it has good battery life. It gets about eight hours of streaming and productivity. Then it gets about two to four hours of Photoshop and video editing work. So that is option number one. I want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video and connecting us with some great sales taking place right now over at bestbuy.com. If you're looking for an on-the-go laptop for 1080p video editing, Best Buy is featuring a sale right now that can save you up to $400 on select thin and light laptops. If you're catching this video in the first week of it going live, you'll find the Dell Inspiron 7000, HP NV15, both with Ryzen's latest 5700U processor, as well as the Lenovo Yoga 9i and 7i featuring the Intel Evo platform. These are great for on-the-go 1080p video editing, graphic design, and with their two-in-one functionality, great for artists as well. As we get closer to the holiday shopping season, you can take advantage of Best Buy's Black Friday price guarantee on select items for Best Buy Total Tech and My Best Buy members. See a laptop that you like, but you're nervous that the price may drop during Black Friday? Order it now as a Total Tech or My Best Buy member and get a price match guarantee on your purchase if a better price comes along this holiday shopping season. You can click the links in the description below for the laptops mentioned in the video and get more details about the price guarantee at bestbuy.com slash Black Friday. Moving up in price, it's gonna be a close battle between the HP Envy and the Asus Republic of Gamer X13. This is probably gonna be one of my favorite laptops in the lineup. It is so thin, it is so light, it feels solid in your hands, it's got great connectivity, and you can also purchase this laptop with an external GPU. Now, this is gonna add about $1,600 to put that RTX 3080 connectivity onto this laptop, but it is an option for you if you need that type of on-the-go performance. And this laptop's gonna come in at around $1,500. Again, live price and availability are in the description below. And this laptop has excellent battery life, excellent performance, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen so that you have a taller screen, which I think really helps with video editing when you're stacking your project, your timeline, your effects, and all that on the screen. It, it's just easier to view, in my opinion. Now, the downside to this laptop, I would say, is probably the trackpad. This is not my favorite trackpad. It's a little on the clunky side. It's a little small for my preference, especially for the fact that they could have pushed these keys up a little bit. The upside for this laptop is great battery life. You can turn off the dedicated GPU and go into iGPU mode. You can get 11 hours of streaming battery life. You can get 13 hours of productivity battery life. And you can get about seven to eight hours of design slash photo editing. So this laptop is definitely one of my top favorites. This comes with the Ryzen 9 5900HX and the RTX 3050 Ti. 
definitely a great one. And like I said, hang on to the end of the video. We're going to get into all the performance benchmarks as well. Next up on the list is going to be the HP NV. This laptop comes at the i7 11800H with either an RTX 3050, 3050 Ti, or even a 3060. Actually, this is the gray version that might only come in silver um, currently, so you can check again in the description below for the current availability. Now, some highlights for this laptop. I like the large, quiet trackpad. I like the glossy screen. I like the keyboard deck. It's got a nice short to medium key press, and it has a good quiet key press. Overall, I think this is a great pick. It's gonna be an aluminum laptop, but I have a little bit less to say about it. It's, I'm not as in love with it as the X13, just off of a user standpoint and a personal preference. So keep that in mind. Next up on the list is going to be a really close battle between the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 and the Asus Zephyrus Republic of Gamer G14 and G15. Okay, let's start with the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. This is definitely one of my favorite laptops if you're gonna want a 15 inch stance. It is substantially thinner than other 15 inch gaming laptops that work great for video editing. It has great color accuracy, it has solid connectivity, it has an SD card slot. The one area that I feel like it's missing is an HDMI port, but you can easily do a USB Type-C dongle or directly connect to your monitor using a USB Type-C cord. Most monitors these days have USB Type-C connectivity. So whenever you get to where you're going with your on-the-go laptop, you can plug in and you'll have no problem to display over USB Type-C. Some little fun features. You see we have the iridescent logo from Legion. Uh, we have the Lenovo iridescence. We have some iridescence on the ledge here. You can see that on the top of the chassis. And then of course we have one on the inside as well, right here. So it's a very, very fun, thin and light laptop. It has great performance. It's got a nice large screen. It has a good keyboard and trackpad. The trackpad is nice and big and it comes in at a reasonable price point. This comes with the RTX 3060 or the RTX 3050 Ti. It has a nice large trackpad. Um, and of course it has the Ryzen 7 5800H. You can get it in 16 gigs of RAM and you can upgrade one of the RAM sticks inside of this laptop. Um, I wish you could upgrade both, but you cannot, so. Sad day for that. The keyboard is good. You have the numpad here. If you're a gamer, that's great use. Personally, I don't use the numpad, so I could take it or leave it. Then you have great ventilation along the back of the chassis, both side panels and the bottom cover. This, it's a great laptop. If you were gonna tell me, hey, you have to decide between the G15 and the Lenovo Legion Slim, I'd be like, I would only take the Slim because it's slightly slimmer, but barely. I mean, barely slimmer. Okay, next up on the list is the Asus Zephyrus G15 and G14. The one I have sitting here on the desk is actually the G15. This is gonna be the least on-the-go friendly out of the bunch. If you want a more on-the-go friendly package, I'd go for the G14, okay? It's gonna be slightly thinner, slightly smaller form factor, but I pulled the G15 up here because I think they're both great options. The biggest bonus to the G15 15 is this larger trackpad. This is a fantastic trackpad. So you can barely even see it with the white there. This is a fantastic trackpad. Okay, let's just outline it here. It's big, it's quiet, it's secured to the chassis very well. The complaint I have with the G14 is that it has a much smaller trackpad. I'm actually kind of disappointed with the trackpad, similar to how I'm disappointed with the X13's trackpad. I just wish they gave us a slightly larger trackpad, especially that these are you know on the go computers. You wanna have some good functionality with your trackpad. So that would be a big complaint of mine. This laptop comes with the Ryzen 9 5900HS in both the G14 and the G15. For the G14, you can get the RTX 3060, and for the G15, you can get the RTX 3070 and 3080. If you want an even cheaper option of the G14, you can even get the 3050 Ti, but if you're getting the G14, to me, you might as well just get the 3060. It's only gonna be slightly more expensive. Again, price is below, so you can check the live pricing. Um, so if I'm incorrect on any of my pricing, you can check the, the complete accurate pricing below. Highlights on the G14 are obviously the on-the-go capability. It has the Asus Armory Crate Command Center, so fantastic battery life. 
great keyboard deck. And then of course, for this one, you have the large 15 inch screen. I think the screen on the G14 might be one of its hindrances because it is a 16 by nine aspect ratio versus the X13 with its 16 by 10 aspect ratio. If it's a smaller screen, I like the taller aspect ratio more. So if you're gonna ask me, hey Ben, you know, would you pick the G14 or the X13? Um, I've actually done a full dedicated review between those two if you wanna check it out, it's on my channel. But just for, you know, conciseness sake, it's not even a word, but it's okay. I would choose the X13 for the slightly taller screen uh, if I want a more on the go friendly laptop, but then I would choose the G14 for slightly more performance with that extra two gigs of VRAM in the RTX 3060. The RTX 3050 Ti has four gigs of VRAM, 3060 has six gigs of VRAM, and the 3070 has eight gigs of VRAM. So that's some options there for you. Of course, this has upward facing speakers for a really nice audio experience. And so does the G14. They have these little upward facing, uh, like little bass speakers. So it's got some good audio experience. Now, one laptop that I don't have in my studio, but I think would make a fantastic on the go video editing laptop would be the Dell XPS 15. Now it comes with the latest i7 11800H, has great color gamut range, is thin and light and aluminum build with a carbon fiber top cover, and then also has the RTX 3050 Ti. So it's gonna be equivalent to the other laptops that we saw with the 3050 Ti's. I think it's gonna be a great laptop. I've had one personally, it lasted me a long time and I really enjoyed it. Still use it from time to time, um, but I just feel like that would be a great option as well. And I know a lot of you will probably ask about that one because of the great build quality, thin and lightness, and the good performance that it offers. Okay, now without further ado to the performance results. As you can see coming up on the screen, we're gonna start in Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core. As you can see, the more powerful Zephyrus and Legion Slim are kind of taking the lead. Keep in mind, we started at budget friendly and are working our way up. So as we get into the more expensive laptops, you're gonna have more performance. So it's just kind of nature of the beast. Um, let's move on now to After Effects. In After Effects, we're seeing very similar results. Those higher performance GPUs, those higher performance CPUs are moving up the charts and leaving the more budget friendly ones slightly behind. Regarding export times out of Premiere Pro, you're gonna see the results on the screen for each of the laptops. For playback, we're gonna see great results out of the G14, G15, Legion Slim, X13. And as we move down the line, we're gonna see some drop frames out of the Acer Swift X. Now, if you're gonna be using any of these laptops for DaVinci Resolve, they're all gonna be really well optimized for DaVinci Resolve playback. And you can see the different export times for DaVinci Resolve on the screen now. Punch for punch, you really can't go wrong with any of these laptops because really it depends on what you need for your performance. Do you need a more budget friendly laptop and you don't need a ton of 4K extreme performance? You just need some good 1080p. Well, this laptop's gonna kill it. If you want a more on the go, super battery life laptop, X13 is gonna be your pick. If you want a big laptop with the best performance, then you probably wanna consider the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim. It's big, but it's slim. If you want performance and you want really good battery life and you love this beautiful white laptop, the Asus Zephyrus G14 or the G15 is gonna be a great pick for you. Seriously, these are all my favorite laptops in this category. I didn't pick a laptop I wouldn't buy myself, so you're in good hands with any of them. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you guys here in the next one.